simply wish to make a healing request, please type into the chat room on hopespiritradio.com with the name of the person, the location, and the condition that the person needs healing. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Good evening, everyone. This is Sunday, the 30th of November, 2014. Universal Mind Radio, in conjunction with Wolf Spirit Radio, would like to present to you two hours of meditation by Frank Jordan. Frank is accompanied this evening by the Earth Mind Healers Group. This evening, Frank will teach us about the universal laws of physics, which is metaphysics. The first hour is a discussion held where Frank talks with Stephen about subjects of interest to members of the audience. During the second hour, Stephen tunes directly into the listening audience where healing requests are made, guides the healings, and often gives insightful information about their situation. Now, Stephen is a separate higher consciousness of Frank that delivers information about the shift of consciousness from the third dimensional world of domination into the fifth dimensional world of dominion. Stephen, through Frank, focuses frequencies of unconditional love into the world group mind that helps people do the necessary subtle energy clearing and DNA assemblage for ascension into dominion. To learn more about Stephen and Francis and Frank, he does have a website, great articles, www.citronics.com P-S-I-T-R-O-N-I-C-S dot com He also has a radio show Wednesday and Saturday morning at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. These shows, Frank uses his subtle energy techniques to release and ease the stress of Mother Earth from land, sea, climate, and man-made changes around the world. Feel free to tune in to help us ease the burden of Mother Earth. Frank here is from Boise, Idaho, and has been an empathic intuitive for over 40 years. He is in direct contact with galactic beings who are guiding Earth's transition into the fourth and fifth dimensions. He is also an active water, mineral, and missing persons dowser and healer. For further information, visit his website or you can call directly his phone number 208-344-9188. His email address, F is in Frank, L. Jordan at Cable1.net. Now, please enjoy the show. Frank? Thank you, Joan. That's a beautiful introduction. And uh, it, it always makes me go introspective and, and look at myself and say, you know what, this is an interesting life. There's so much to experience and, and learn, and every day is a learning experience. I know that every client I work with is a whole new encyclopedia ready to, to be opened up and examined and, and to uh, to enjoy. And I had one today that was really unusual, and maybe it's not. That's why I want to talk to you about it. Maybe it's more prevalent than we realize out there. Our special guest tonight is is Rich Ralston, and uh, Rich hasn't, isn't on yet that I can see. So uh, when he comes in, he's going to talk about entities and end dwellers and, and um, crossing souls over and things of that nature. So uh, hopefully he'll show up pretty soon and and I can hand you over to him. In the interim, I'm uh, here now. Oh, are you there? Okay. Well, I, I'm going to quickly tell about this this incident that I this client I had today. It, it, it may you can trigger off of that possibly. All right. This was a four year old boy, and his, his father came to me because. Of, 
the little guy is not learning how to speak properly. He, he just doesn't seem to want to make any effort to speak, although he, he can vocalize. And and um, when I I did some promo work with the father, first of all, to, to see what the father's life had been like. And he'd been severely abused as a child, the father had. And uh, I won't tell you all the details, but it, it was a pretty horrible childhood where he bounced around through foster homes and and uh, just literally, even though he's an incredibly psychic, sensitive person, he just pulled in and went internal and, and blocked himself out from the outer world for survival. And um, so as I w- discussed things with him, I, I began to realize that that the child, uh, since I've been studying and learning so much about about the subtle energies and how nuances and and um, attachment to the genes can pass right on and into the child. So I asked about the mother. Turns out she was an Indonesian lady that came in, and he, the fellow married her, and she hadn't even learned the language yet. So she. She had a terrible time learning the language and getting adjusted, and the child was in her uterine at that time. And so, here's this little guy that that was programmed to to not say anything. You get in trouble if you say the wrong thing. And so, when I went into him, it was like a, an energy field was sitting right down in his primitive brain, and that energy field was was. Totally keeping, excluding his high self, his high soul, from coming all the way in and, and helping to, to uh, develop his human, humanity, his humanness, so to speak. And and uh, when I worked with it a little bit, I was able to clear that, clear that fear and, and that was programmed into him from his father and his mother, and the need to not say anything, to keep quiet, to keep hidden out. So he'd not be noticed, and I lifted that field off of him, and immediately his high self came in, and and moved right in and, and took up a position in the low self as it can do, and where it begins to domesticate the the, the animal uh, consciousness of the low self. And uh, what the most amazing thing was is that the, I was even though I was working through the father. The little guy ran up and began to chatter to his dad right at the end of the session. And uh, I followed what he was saying, what he was trying to convey, even though he couldn't articulate well. And he he was just all excited because uh, he was here. He could talk now. Everything was okay. So I was really delighted with that, too. And I think it's something we should look at in a lot of kids who have who have developmental problems and and um, uh, well anyway that's enough of that story. Rich, welcome. How are things over in Maui today? Beautiful. It's cooling down here. <laughs> oh, you poor thing! It must be seventy degrees at least. The seventies is perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, this is Rich's night because he's had so much experience. He's been working with me three or four years now, and I hope to introduce him to the world of, of, of psychic healing, of using your psychic abilities to read people and to go into other dimensional realities. And, and uh, uh, Rich was already a healer. He was a, a Christian minister healer. And could do pretty effective healing work, but he never really got into the depths of understanding how it worked and why it worked. And and but he's he's doing a phenomenal job now. And one of the things that we both worked with extensively and and have come to understand is how important it is to understand the subtle energies and cross dimensional energies of other creatures and beings that that it inhabit this these parallel realities that sit right around us and that we can interact with them all the time and never know it. And uh, Rich has really done a wonderful job of developing his skills and in, in, in all of that. So, Rich, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and um, maybe I'll just chime in and add a thing or two along the go. But um, you did give a talk in our our, our um, 
uh, our alternate group, the stellar group, the other day, and, and impressed me that you should tell everybody about what you know now. So go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Is the volume all right? It's a little bit weak. It's a little bit weak. We can turn it up just a bit. I'm, I'm trying to prevent it. I got hearing aids on. I'm trying to prevent an echo. Yeah. Uh, how about that right there? Is that okay? I'm okay. How's everyone else? Sounds pretty good so far. Yeah, yeah, it's clear and we can hear it. Maybe Sorry, down. There's a little bit of feedback going on. Yeah, um, one notch. Turn your speakers down a bit. Okay, I'll I'll back it down just a tad, but right there. Let's see if that keeps that echo, that feedback. So um, we're talking during the private session we had. We were talking about entities. What are entities? It's quite a fascinating subject. The word entity can imply just about any energy form or field of consciousness that um, exists. So I mean, you can call angels entities. You could call the galactic entities, but I'm not going to be referring to them. I want to refer to uh, consciousness that uh, attaches to human beings and affects us in our daily lives. Um, and through the dowsing techno- uh, techniques that Frank teaches, um, I use his oracle, which is a little spring device, and it, it helps me considerably to speed up the process of getting answers quickly and accurately to determine the problems that people have. Uh, I can psychically tune in and feel and sense and get the information without it, but it takes longer, it takes more effort. And when you have somebody in front of you, uh, or if you have a number of people to work on, you want to get through this stuff, you want to get down to what's really important to deal with. So this is a wonderful device, you should look into it and uh, get a hold of Frank about that because I'm going to be teaching classes here in, the, in January on dowsing and, and trying to teach some of the psychics here how to use it. Anyway, so the, di- the dowsing device is something that I use to determine uh, what kind of entity or energy form people have. So before, a lot of people, I, I work on remotely or I can do Skype. Some people come over to my house, but I always check on them before I meet with them to find out what kind of entities they have within them or on them. And um, because entities are nothing but energy forms of consciousness. And when you're a light worker, you're kind of like a little beacon out there and energy is attracted to you. So you can pick up the energy from other life forms or other people. So you don't want to do that. You want to shield your aura. So the first thing I do is I shield my aura. And then uh, sometimes if I'm remotely working on people, I'll astral project my consciousness over to them. So I'm not working in my space. I'm working in their space. And I'm not affected by their their energy. I'm, I'm an observer rather than it's you know picking that all that stuff up. So like this morning, um, I was working on a, a young man. Uh, his his father called me last night and was asking me to see if I could do something to help his son, who was partially suicidal. And uh, just kind of beside himself, he he, he was irrational. Uh, he took off in his car one day, was gone for a day, he comes back. The next day, just so anyway, trying to figure this out, he was living on a piece of property that his his grandfather owned. His father was in Oahu, wasn't even with him. But his, so he kind of lived with his grandfather. Well, his grandfather died a couple of months ago, and his grandfather's 
high and low soul, both went into this young man. So it created such a disturbance in his chakra system, and now he's got basically two human beings living in the same body. So this young man who was struggling with his own identity to begin with, due to his parents' divorce and other things, kind of fell victim to the grandfather's personality and became very angry uh, because the reason why he was angry was the grandfather had been married uh, to a wonderful woman and she died in a car accident. And then he remarried um, and this woman basically took the estate away from the whole family by talking him into changing the trust over to her. So when he died, none of the kids got any of the estate. She gets everything. Well, his soul's still there. His soul's still picking this up. And his soul, he doesn't want to leave. He, he feels like it's his obligation to try to straighten things out. So he goes into his grandson to try to fix this situation. Well, it's not going to work. The, the, the stepmom gets everything anyway. But so anyway... I had to go in and remove and cross over the low soul and the high soul of this grandfather today. And that was just the beginning. Then I went in and disconnected all the cords off of him. Cords are just simply attachments from other people uh, that attach. They either pull energy or the person's taking energy from someone else. So we, we disconnected all of that. And then I had to start dealing with the the high self of this and the low self of this person because this young man had really never been able to get his power for himself and decide how to live and what's right and what's wrong and just a, so I was I kind of went into his low self and high self both and started reasoning with him trying to help him stabilize himself. So uh, that's where I left it with, um, I did some Ho'oponopono, which is, it's a, a way of asking forgiveness. You, you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. And it's a way of clearing karma. It's a way of clearing energy, the standing waves of anger. You're replacing the standing waves with unconditional love and forgiving. So it's really paramount for healing is forgiveness. And the old thought pattern of, well, I'm just going to forgive this person, so I forgive them, doesn't usually work too well because the standing ways of the emotions of anger are still in, usually in the solar plex chakra, and it has to be released. The energy has to be energetically released from the person. And then forgiveness will hold. So that's what I was working on with this particular person this morning. But to, to complicate the matters, um, this is this particular property is in a sanctioned Hawaiian area that was pretty much deeded over to the Hawaiians as sovereign land. And there's heiaus there, which are sacred spots where souls congregate because that's where they used to do their ceremonies. They would either do um, funerals or weddings or they would offer sacrifices to their gods or whatever. And there's just a heiau just down the street from this house. Well, heiaus kind of act as portals for souls. So there were ten souls that were on this property so I had to cross them over and explain to them that their time and purpose being here on the island is over with. They don't need to protect their land any longer. They can, they can go back to their soul group. So then I crossed that over, those ten souls over, which helped to free up this property because we're talking about entities and so, uh, many, many times when people come to see me, 
I, I ask them, first of all, their address. And then I go on Google Map, and I get on the satellite, and I Google, and I look at their property. Because now I have a visual. I can see their property. And then I douse it for, for souls. So how many souls do we have on this property that are still there? Last week I cleared over 600 souls from a guy's property. It come out, come to find out it was King Kamehameha's worship center for his goddess. It had a fertility uh, stone there. It had the phallic and the, and the other symbols there. Uh, it had everything. It was, this guy owned these, this land and he was trying to prevent, you know, protect it for himself, but he was having all this problem. So, all these souls were creating disturbances. So I, I, I released them all and they all went back where they're supposed to go. So when you're dealing with people when they're coming to you, I found that it's interest, it's kind of important to find out what's going on where they live. Because sometimes you can heal their bodies and clear them out, but then they're affected by other souls that are on the property. So I, I usually start with clearing the land, clearing the property. Then I clear them, and then we can get somewhere. Now when they, uh, like for an example, this morning I had another lady. She came over last week, and she had she brought this beautiful daughter of her, 17 years old. She's a, She does have psychic ability. She can tune into things. And she was telling me, she says, I pick up these images in my house. I've actually seen footsteps. And I said, well, you know how to deal with it. She says, no, I, I don't know what to do. So I, I doused the property. There was 108 souls on their property because it, again, was up next to a portal. So I cleared that out. And then I worked with her on learning to develop her power so when the souls come to her, she could tell them to leave. They could, you know, they don't bother her because they were waking her up in the middle of the night all the time. Well, anyway, she emailed me this morning and said, I can't sleep again. Please help me. So I had to go in and clear more souls. But um, it's one of those things where you have to be aware of the fact that you can be influenced by these external uh, energy forms. But that's only one type of entity, and that's, we were just talking about the souls of people. But then we have other, all kinds of other kinds of entities. We have, which is probably the most under, um, misunderstood is the, what we call non-human cross-dimensional entities. Now, one of the things I've learned by crossing over thousands of souls, I take pictures of the orbs at night. And I can identify the orbs, whether they're the low soul of people or the high souls of people or whether they're non-human. Now, sometimes I have groups of lights that come to me, and they're, they're non-human. They're orbs of, they're some different other life form, and they're just there to observe me. Well, when we're dealing with non-human cross-dimensional life forms, we don't even know what they are. I mean, there's so many. There, there could be thousands of different other kinds of life forms in another dimension that we don't even understand who they are. And they really don't know who we are. They're kind of observing us. They see our aura. They see our light. They come in to, to observe us. And many times people pick up these little entities and I call them non-human, uh, Frank calls them non-human cross-dimensional, which is very appropriate because we don't know really w what dimension they're from, but one of the things that they do is they interrupt our chakra system because what they're really doing is they're trying to find a home for their energy field of consciousness. And when I tune into them, they're usually disrupting the polarity of someone. A person will be completely off. Maybe they're the negative polarity is not even working hardly. Uh, their organs of their body aren't functioning. They got fibromyalgia or some, some, some quote unquote disease, which really isn't a disease. It's a malfunction of the polarity of the human body that creates imbalances 
uh, in the internal organs of the body. So once you get rid of these entities, now what I found about the non-humans, they, they can communicate with you um, on a psychic level, they understand your intent, and what I do is I usually just create, I, I, I encapsulate them in a vortex of energy, and then I lift them out of the person, and I create another vortex, and I, I have an angel come in, and I ask them to send that person back to where they belong, send this entity back to where it belongs, and find an appropriate energy field for it to exist in. Because I don't, most of them don't purposely try to interrupt our space. But if people are taking mind altering drugs, like acid or even smoking marijuana, they will, they'll pick them up because they open up their crown chakra. And when you smoke marijuana, you drop your blood sugar down, which opens up your crown chakra and just invites entities to come in. Same way with drinking too much alcohol. Uh, there's a limit in which you lose control. Once you lose control of your senses, then you're opening yourself up to other energy forms if they desire to come in to you. So, um, that it, just a word of, you know, be careful. The other thing is Ouija boards. If you got one, throw it in the trash and forget about it. Don't mess with them. Because most people aren't prepared to deal with the energies that come through those things. So these non these non human cross dimensional entities though, uh, I would say probably one out of five people I work on have them, and they've been with people for quite a while. And sometimes they develop long term uh, physical illnesses, and they're the doctors can't figure out why or, and once you remove those, the the body comes back into balance. The body automatically will readjust and heal itself. So that's that's an entity in itself. And I always douse to get those out of people before I let them in my house because I don't really want them trying to attach themselves to me or anybody in my family. But then we go into um, the low and high self human entities. Now, these aren't souls. These are energy forms from people. I have a lot of women come to me and they've been divorced two or three times and they can't have a relationship with anybody. Every time it turns out to be the same old, the, the husband either, or the boyfriend abuses her or whatever. So, so the first thing you do is you tune into this energy and you find that she's got her exes. They're not in Texas, they're in her but not their souls, their low self energies in them, the possessive part, the dominating egocentric ego. The, it's either the, it's the ego, it's the sexual, it's the root chakra, protective survival. You, you still belong to me. You can't have anybody else, you know, that kind of energy. And when you speak to them, they get pretty nasty. So I use the energy ball technique. I wrap them up into an energy ball, and I lift them out of the person, send them back where they came. And once that's done, it's really easier for the... Then, of course, then you have to replace that energy with unconditional love and go back in and empower the person. And that, that goes back to the technique that Frank's taught about getting your power back. You energetically go back to those people and say, I want my power back. You get your power back from them because you gave it away to them. Once you do that, your subconscious realizes that you're in charge of everything now. Now you have a fighting chance to uh, create a new reality for yourself and move on and be the person that you want to be. So these um, high and low human entities uh, they can be, uh, they can be, you know, deceased relatives energy that are still in people. My like grandma died 10 years ago and, and her low self energy is always not necessarily the soul because the soul is different. This is just energy attachments. 
So you want to check that and see what you can discover in people. Are there, like, they're high, so, high self. So if you see somebody that's, um, having a hard time making decisions and they, they kind of vacillate between one idea and another idea and another idea that may not be their soul, the other person's soul. It may just be how they've been influenced through the energy of that person. They kick on a little bit of their personalities. So you want to get rid of those too. The object is to free the person so that they can be who they want to be. And most people don't have any idea who they really are or who they really want to be because they've been told who they're supposed to be and how to live all their lives. And they, and through all this group consciousness, they've been programmed to be the puppet that society is wanting them to be. So it's quite a challenge to get people to readjust themselves and to formulate and learn to communicate with their soul. So when you're in Frank's meditation, and in the, one of the first things we do is we step back into the soul center, it's very important for you to learn how to do that because you want to learn to communicate with your soul and find out what your soul's purpose is. Because if you don't know what your soul's purpose is, you're going to be doing what else somebody else wants you to do. Or more likely to be doing much of what someone else wants you to do. So we want to learn how to help people to discover who they are and who they want to be. And removing entities is the ABCs of allowing people to regain their power. Now there's another kind of entity that we have to deal with and those are called earth entities. And they are, um, they're quite, inter they're quite powerful. They can create a lot of sickness in people. And the more I work with them, the more I, I've learned. I had somebody, a lady come to me two weeks ago and, um, I was, she had this, um, She'd been married three times to abusive men. They all were just you know, physically abusive to her. Her father uh, had molested um, her son. So I, I discovered there was a family flow of incest in this family. And I thought, boy, I got my hands full of this one. So... Um, I went, I, I started dousing whether I should do past life clearings. And the first thing that I realized was I kept getting a no, but I kept going back anyway into time. And I discovered that there were earth, there was these entities. They were, uh, now what I discovered was I never had seen this one before. This person's ancestors had wanted this father to stop and break this cycle of incest. And uh, he just refused to. He became an alcoholic, and then he was abusing his son. And it was a really, then I had to work on the son and clear him. But anyway, he, he, he negated his karmic responsibility in this life. So these ancestors were pissed off at him. And they were pissed off at his, at, at, at the mother too. And they allowed these entities to come into her and him. And they were, what they were doing was they were causing physical problems. It was, it was almost like a form of punishment to them because of their negligence. So, uh, um, I had never experienced anything like this before. And I kept, questioning whether I was doing something right or not. And finally, I realized that the ancestors were saying, you know, these people knew what they were supposed to do, and they negated this, and we're almost, we're like punishing them. So I, I went back, and I stopped the whole thing with, I talked to the ancestors and says, listen, let's give this another try, okay? Let's do ho o pono pono. Let's forgive these people. And then let me take these entities, earth entities out, 
And I took them out and put them below the heart chakra of, of Gaia. And then I started going back in past lives. I don't know how many, I think it was like five different past lives until I got to the, the past life where the father had started this insensuous act. And I cleared that. And then I, I kept moving forward and I got it up to the standing ways of now where there's no more of that left. And that changed this woman incredibly. Her, her, the father I don't know about because he lives somewhere else on the mainland. But the son, the son came in to see me and he was at first very, very shy and timid and kind of reluctant to talk to me. But I went into him and I took away the trauma of the incest, the, the sexual stuff, and cleared him of that. And then he started opening up to me. And um, now I've had two sessions with him. This last session, he's forgiven his father, and now he's we're working on manifesting a career for him, working with t Chinese tourists here in Maui. So it's like it's been this big turnaround in his behavior because that energy is gone and those entities are gone. So uh, the earth entities are just kind of bizarre. They, they, uh, there's other ones that people get, though, from um, – Ouija boards and dabbling in uh, magic and stuff like that, curses. Um, I worked with a guy that was autistic, and uh, I discovered that he was autistic because he had a, a curse put on his family. So it went way back to the, I don't know, 17th century. And every so many generations, it would appear, and it was a... a an energy field that would basically block the neurotransmitters of the human mind from developing. So these kids would end up, when I'm saying autistic, I meant they couldn't talk. They, they were, they were, they had to put this kid in a, uh, a football helmet on because he bashed his head against the wall. So when I first started working on him, that's what he was like. And I went in and I, cleared this curse, and uh, I actually picked up an earth entity from it, which took me a while to get rid of, because I'd never done that before, but I had permission to do it, so I said, what the hell, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to see if I can do something here. And uh, I was able to clear that off, and then I was able to start bringing healing toward, to this, this, this child was, now 35 years old, he was still doing the same thing. So you can imagine, I mean, being in a mental place. So all of a sudden he started shifting out of it. And uh, then I was able to use uh, the resources that we use from the galactic center, the, the photon energy is coming down to start healing this guy's mind and his body. And now he's He's actually functioning. He's speaking. Um, he's doing a lot of a lot of good things now. But uh, it started out with down in Earth, there were these entities that were, uh, I guess they were assigned to disable uh, the uh, somehow manipulate the DNA, I guess, of this person because. They came in pretty much handicapped. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for all people. I doubt if that is. But this was just a rare case that I had the privilege of learning about and working on. And I've learned so much by uh, being allowed to help this person. So it shows me that there's a lot and a lot of entities. There's a lot of different energy forms out there that we we're just discussing. We don't have to know everything about them. The main thing we need to do is be able to identify them and, and release them. And I think that the, the, 
the one thing that I have the ability to do that helps me a lot is create vortexes. Because when I find one of these entities, I create a vortex of energy around it. And I, so it doesn't, it doesn't have an opportunity to come into me, at least most of the time. And then I, I try to psychically communicate with this to find out what it is and what it's doing, where it's from. And uh, it's, it's quite intriguing. And then when you can find out its source, then that's why I'll send it back to its source. And like the earth entities, most of them I send them back below. I ask Gaia to open up the vortex, and then I shoot them down underneath the heart chakra, and I seal it off. And they can go back to whatever energy form they came from. I'm not there to destroy them. I just want to get them out of this person so they, they can function. Because the human aura is so delicate. Our chakra system is so delicate. It's, you know, it's a, it's a refined computer system. And you go in there and you mess with the, the polarity of it and it just throws everything completely off. So that, that's what I've learned about earth entities. Um, and I also have a real strong connection with my ancestral spirits. Um, and I, they help me to clear entities, the earth entities of people. They protect me from them. I'm not, you know, as much as you want to protect yourself, you're not always 100% protected, but you, you, you try to use every safeguard you can because we're working with unknowns and we don't really understand everything about them. We're, Sorry, Rich, I have to interrupt. Uh, we're getting a bit of feedback. Okay, let me tune this down a little bit. How's that? That's much better. Thank you. Well, so um, I, I think that kind of runs the gamut for uh, for the entity part of this. Do um, we have any questions or comments? I do about the Earth entities. Um, I wasn't quite clear about... Uh, what you were saying about ancestors, you use earth entities to help protect you as well as, is that what you mean? Your own, uh, ancestors to help you from the other earth entities. I, yeah. I'm also, I'm also understanding that earth entities are ancestors of some form. Well, I'm not really, uh, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to, um, when I say ancestors, I mean, if I go back in my family flow, back to the Akashic Records, I have, I have souls in my soul group that have chosen not to incarnate. And they've chosen to stay in that form of consciousness, which I call ancestors. And they, they actually help me when I, they bring me soul groups that need to be crossed over the low soul. They're the ones that help me to, when I, when I cross over low souls, I, I create a vortex and I, I go back to their soul group and I ask for one of their ancestors to come forward. I can literally see them come in through a vortex up to the, the entrance. And that allows the souls that I'm crossing over to identify and recognize who, that they're actually going back to their original soul group. Okay, my ancestors help me in that. I don't consider my ancestors as entities. What I consider an entity is some sort of an uh, unauthorized energy dark energy form that intrudes into someone's aura and tries to take their energy away or disrupt them or hurt them in some way. And most of it is directed by someone's intent, I believe. The people that, that practice uh, black magic or voodoo, they, they direct earth entities from below the heart chakra into people to, even the Hawaiians, they had a whole technique of it too. 
and they could kill people or disable them or whatever they wanted to do with it. So that's what I'm referring to as an entity, not my ancestors. I consider my ancestors as the same as angels, except they're in the ground instead of above the ground. Does that make sense? Elaborate. Well, Ans well ancestors. You consider your ancestors, say that again. My ancestors are incarnate souls in my soul group that have chosen to help me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I literally talk to them. Um, when I, I was at a place the other day and I cleared a guy's land and I brought up my ancestors to protect me from the low souls and every, all these other energy forms around me. And then I invited the Devic energy forms to come up to heal the land. And the, uh, uh, the Devic, the Devic spirits, I don't consider them as entities. They're, they're in a class of themselves. They're in their own class. They're a manifestation of energy that's been created to hold things and patterns in existence such as the energy fields of plants and animals and the earth itself, the wind, the ocean. So those, I don't, I'm not putting those into a category of entities. I, they're in their own devic form of consciousness themselves. The same way I look at my ancestors are the, the low soul the low souls in my soul group that decided not to incarnate, they're down in earth mind, and, and I have full access to them. I can talk to them. So I don't know if you, cause I, when I, when I go into, when I go into other, um, soul, soul groups, I can speak their languages. I can literally speak their languages to them. I, prompted and shown uh, how to communicate with them. So my ancestors allow me. See, in Hawaii, you don't just walk onto somebody's property here. Um, you need permission. Uh, almost half this island is sacred payout. And a lot of people, they have all kinds of problems because they trespass on sacred places. Well, I'm being led to these places, but before I go, I get permission. I ask my ancestors to contact the spirits of the island and ask permission. I, do I have permission? And they say, I haven't been rejected yet. Most of them say, yes, we understand who you are. We understand your, we, we know your ancestors. We know you. You have permission to come into our land and you have permission to help souls cross over. So that's not what I call entities. They're, um, if you want to call them anything, they're just incarnate low souls that are here to help us. Does that make sense now? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And also, I like how you distinguished um, that the your ancestors are not necessarily blood relatives, their soul, the origin is, the connection, I should say, or the thread is from the soul group. Yeah. Well, uh, chances are they're not my, my grandfather or my, you know, those kind of recent, they could be, but they're, they're ancient, they're, they're the old soul, the souls in my soul group that have chosen to, I, I, I really think they're my helpers because they, they, they instruct me, they show me things. Like for an example, when I go down to the ocean before I swim, I always ask my ancestors and my guides, is it safe for me to swim? Because I don't want a 12 foot shark bite my leg off. And if, it, if it's not safe, they go, no, don't go in the water. Don't go in the water. So um, I use them as a means of protection here. Um, 
I mean, there's a lot of people. I, I, one of the worst things that you can do when you're going to some place to try to clear land or anything is get cocky and presumptuous about who you think you are as a psyche. Um, or you think you're so great that you can just do whatever you want. That's not a very good way of approaching things because um, you have to respect the land, you have to respect your ancestors because they were here before you and you were one of them as well. So everything should be done with respect. Respect them. Even when you're dealing with entities, you still need to respect them. Um, and then, you know, I always politely ask them to leave and then if they don't want to, then I'll forcefully tell them to leave. But I will make them leave if they're going to hurt somebody, if I have a permission, they're going to go one way or the other. And if I, if they're really giving me a bad time, then I just ask my ancestors to come up and help me, and they leave immediately. So it shows me that my ancestors have a lot of power here. Rich, so, uh, I, I have a question. Um, how did you start feeling, or how did you first come to know that your ancestors were there and helping you. Was that something you've known since you were a little child? No. Uh -uh. I wasn't even aware of my ancestors until uh, I don't know, probably about a, a year after Frank and I started working together. Uh, actually, I guess it was when I lived in Idaho. I used to go up to the mountains and do the medicine wheel and it was kind of an introductory course of um, shamanism for me because I, one of my past lives I wasn't Native American. And it kind of tied me back to my roots of uh, working with the earth. And then I discovered, well, at first I thought they were just guides, but uh, as I learned to go into earth mind and to go down into you know, take your awareness down in there uh, and that there were these souls down there that were waiting to help me. And they started communicating with me and giving me advice as to what to do. Especially when I first started crossing low souls over, this was like when my father passed away and I was just learning how to do this stuff. Uh, they helped me understand things. So, um, you know, I was kind of introduced, and, and of course I would have never discovered it if I hadn't known how to do the, the clearing away techniques of getting down into earth mind. Because there are so many people out there that are psychics that know nothing about earth mind. So they limit themselves really big time. Because there's a whole field of consciousness in Gaia that they can work with. And it's just kind of like adding another whole bunch of tools to your toolbox, especially when you're working with people that come in and you don't have any idea what's going on with them until you start dousing and finding out, and then 50% of the problems they have have something related to do with either past lives, their karma, earth entities, um, and that all involves my ancestors helping me are, are crossing over low souls. So, uh, are you, was it Jackie? Were you the one that asked me this question? Yes, it was, Rich. Are, are you working with ancestors? No, I'm not, but I have um, frequent thoughts about some of my ancestors who I never met. I mean, they it's like their names or their faces because I have old pictures come through my mind at times and I thought that was interesting if they're well, trying to get in touch with me I don't know you know I don't even know their names uh, one of the one of the ways that I got introduced to my ancestors was I had a guitar teacher that, in Idaho that was a shaman and one time we finished our classes which is would you like to do a a shaman uh, ceremony. I go, yeah, sure. 
Well, she started doing her thing with be uh, beating on the tambourine and dancing and carrying on and all this stuff. Well, I was sitting there and I, I created a vortex around her and me and I went down into Earthline and, uh, what she was doing, she opened up a frequency that allowed me to see my ancestors. And I was literally sitting over here on one of these islands, uh, surrounded by a bunch of, uh, I don't know what they were, Tahitians or Samoans or something. And they were all, uh, standing around me and, and I could actually literally see, um, see them dancing around me. So that was my first introduction to my ancestors. But I don't really do um, the, beat, the drum beating shamanic stuff. I don't really need to now. All I have to do is take my awareness back down and I'm, I'm communicating with them. But I don't have a, I don't call them Bill and John and Harry, so to speak. I, I just see them uh, as these powerful beings of, uh, standing around me. And we communicate through, through our, uh, through unconditional love to each other. Cause I'm always thanking them for their love and their protection to me. And I, but I don't, I, I don't have a, what we would call a personal relationship with each one of them. Um, it's kind of like angels. I have three or four really prominent angels that I work with, but many times I'll call on a whole bunch of angels or I'll ask the Galactic Center. I don't even know who they are, their names, but they still give me the energy I need. So it's kind of like, uh, it'd be great if you could communicate with them, Jackie, but I haven't really, I really haven't done that. I, I guess it, I just haven't found it necessary. Well, it's just a new thought process for me to acknowledge that I have these two great grandmothers that I frequently think about. I have pictures of them and I, it, that's been going on for many years and it never occurred to me that, uh, they may be there to help me. And I, now that I'm hearing you, I'm going to really do some, um, meditating on it. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, sure. Well, I think that we have more helpers than we realize. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of my first teachers to teach me about psychic stuff, stuff was my mother. Um, after she died, her, um, high soul would come to me and she would t teach me things. She would tell me things. She would tell me what I was going to be doing in the future. And, and, uh, it was incredibly valuable to me. So we can have, uh, you know, our loved ones come and advise us. I was really interesting. I was, um, I was teaching class, I've been teaching classes on this stuff. And my father, my father came and my father-in-law came and one of my old buddies that used to be a Baptist preacher, he came to my class. These are all high souls. They all came to my class to listen to my class one night. And um, it was funny because one of the ladies that came into my class, she, she has clairvoyance, and she turned around and says, are they going to allow us into this room? <laughs> I said, okay, you guys, sit up on the corner with you and listen, but don't, just, don't interrupt my students. So... What's funny about this is even the souls that have crossed over, they, they can come back and learn from us as well as we can learn from them because we're all at different stages of development. I find that really fascinating. Hi, Rich. I'm curious now to think, well, for them to get into that place, they've died. And how do they, once they're crossed over, have access to pop back and forth? Well, high souls can come back and forth whenever they want. It's the low souls that generally don't come back. 
they're, they're down there trying to find a body to incarnate in. But the high souls have access to come back and form. And because uh, they're only up in the fifth or sixth dimension, what I've found. So if you take, if you're trying to find a relative, just raise your awareness up to the fifth or sixth dimension. And what I do is I just ask an angel, I'll say, go find such and such for me, will you? And I ask them if they're interested in communicating with me. And um, if they do, they'll come and they'll come right to you. Because there's no th such thing as time and space. They're, but they've all chosen to be in a certain reality of consciousness. Um, but they can come back to visit us anytime they want. But lots of times my father-in-law come back and I'll say, George, where have you been, man? It's been two months. He goes, well, I was taking a, cl I was in the fifth, sixth dimension. I'm taking a class. I'm learning things. So we learn after we die. Our high souls continue to learn if they choose to. Because we, we create all these realities for us to go and see and do. We're not just the old concept we sit on a cloud and play a harp is a bunch of crap. We're up there doing things if we want to. So well, they, I might add to something there, a point that I've learned is, is that dimensional beings are in that dimension because of the frequency of the level that they've attained in, ex in extending consciousness. And once you've risen to a level of consciousness, perception, spiritual reality, cognizance, whatever you want to call it, whether you're incarnate or incarnate, you can always go back down in the frequencies because you've been there before. That's where you got your basic learning. Now, when a, an entity or something wants to rise up in the frequencies, it has to earn that right privilege. It has to l l earn it with knowledge and how to utilize what it's learned and how to be non-destructive. Any, any destructive entity is going to stay right in the realm or the, or the frequency range where it's, it's functioning until it learns otherwise and is allowed to move upward into the higher frequencies. And so um, when you start communicating with these entities and everything, it helps to have the realization that our chakra system, our bodies, our human biocomputers are in resonance with the high frequency ranges as well as the low frequency ranges. And the heart, of course, is the center that divides the two. And the lower ones are those that are on the evolutionary path of going from primal consciousness by learning and developing over hundreds and thousands of millions of years as they fight their way up through the levels of consciousness to the point where they can transcend into the higher levels where they're, they're no longer in survival necessarily, but they can expand the consciousness out into the overall more intelligent realms that, that hold the form and guide the reality of all those below them. So we're in a, in a constant transition all the time. Each one of the dimensions I talk about, uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever you want to talk about, is a dimension of learning and the physical reality. And that's the beauty of having a physical body is because you can do so much with it and have so much opportunity to learn as we experience and enjoy it and evolve. Now, the higher ones that that have centered on up maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of years ahead of us. Those are the, what I call the soul groups that can, that have, have, because of like mind or consciousness or experience are, are kind of bound together in, in a soul group that can come, can descend back down and work with, with us, particularly if we have come out or are ascending up that through that soul group ourselves. It's like like resonances of consciousness that holds various souls within it uh, because of their experience and their past backgrounds and the area that they've chosen to, to experience. For example, Koreans would have a far different quality and type of soul group than what Russians do or Irish do or or Americans do, or even the American Indians. And when you start working in the, in the alternate realms, you, you re learn to recognize those differences in frequency patterns 
and uh, what information they have available to them to draw from 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 the oversoul, uh, from the soul flows, or f- from their experiences of, of the undersouls that are that the undersoul information that has experienced and is patterned into earth mind you can go back into and pick up and, and learn from also. It's all a matter of remembering not only what you've been, but what you're becoming, where you're going. And as soon as you put your focus of mind, your thought on something, it opens the, the channels to all that information. But we're not allowed to understand what's above us until we've earned that right to be there. That's why we're working so hard to get into the fourth dimension, because with that comes the rights and gifts and privileges that are ours by divine right in our soul flow. Those rights and and memories and abilities that we didn't necessarily lose, we chose to set aside so we could descend down in here and be humans. So we're, we're going full circle now. We're evolving back up into those higher realms of consciousness. Um, but when you talk about all the other life forms and entities out there, they're all doing the same thing. There are many that, that resonate with the higher chakra ranges and higher frequencies. There are millions right here on Earth that are evolving on Earth that are the lower ranges. And the, if you look at all the physical animals and, and uh, species that are available here on Earth, I think I read one time there was 10 million different species or something like that on Earth. That's the physical ones that have grown through DNA and holding a form, utilizing a form. But think of all the entities of consciousness that are participating with us in in other subtle dimension realities that don't have physical form. That's the ones that we're, we talk about, Rich and I, when we're talking about entities and things like that. The negative ones will be those of the lower ranges that uh, like to utilize our energy or intrude and live vicariously through us, through our experiences in the physical form, something like that. The higher ones of uh, other dimensional realities uh, don't necessarily want to get contaminated with sticking their toe back down into our pool. Uh, most of them, uh, the higher ones, you don't have to worry about because they, they've gained the consciousness level where they know they create karma for themselves if they if they uh, intrude in our lives or our reality. The lower ones are reaching up and and grabbing hold of our toes and trying to climb upwards through our systems because they want to be what we are. They want to have our, our knowledge and gifts and skills and ascend to the level that we are. But they have to earn that way. So when they're intruding in us, um, they have to go back. That's why when Richard puts his, his mind on a, a group of a hundred entities and, and tells them to go back to their source, it's because they're in an inappropriate place and time for our lives and our lifestyles. So they have to, they have to pull out and go back to where they originated from to carry on their own experiences without interfering with us. Does that make any more sense to you? And there is a whole volumes and volumes and volumes of, of information that we can talk about and experiences. And this is why no two experiences are ever exactly the same. This is why we use the dowsing tools to access higher intuitive people, beings that are, are, are there to help us out with intelligence and consciousness. And as we use the tool... Every time you use this, this one of these oracles, I call them, you open channels of consciousness asking higher dimensional uh, realms and regions for information, and it'll, you can access that because they will give it to you if, if it, it's helping you to understand or to help someone else. And so it, it's like living in the midst of an incredible encyclopedia. It's like I mentioned at the start of the class. Every page has volumes of information on it and you choose those pages by your point of attention this is why the clearing the way techniques are important is you learn how to how to how to navigate your system this incredible chakra system 
through the vibe reports on every level of consciousness that we're talking about, either higher level or lower levels, by putting your point of attention on something and then asking. And asking is just, it's just like a need, like expressing a need for that information. And when you express that need, your system responds by delivering it to you, whether it's from um, ancestors or or daily course of consciousness or the animal realm or whatever. And the primary thing is getting the clarity to be able to discern when the answers come to you and to interpret them properly. And uh, that's why I like the dowsing tools so well is because it's another a tool of accessing these realms and consciousness and getting information without having to use our psychic ability too much. It's like Rich says, it takes energy to do all of this stuff. And it does get tiring, and uh, it it can backflush on you if you intrude into the wrong realms occasionally. That's why you always ask before we stumble into something. And we learned that the hard way, right, Rich? <laughs> Say that again. Yes. <clears throat> you know, you were talking about soul groups, and I was I was thinking uh, I've crossed a couple groups of souls over. One was a Japanese soul group that came to my backyard, and they were actually, I was actually in their soul group um, at one time, and they they invited me to come back to their soul group, you know, when I cross over, and I said, well, thank you very much. These were high souls. I said, but I've already experienced everything that I want to experience with you folks. I love you dearly, but... Thank you very much. And then the second group was a Hawaiian group that I was associated with of 6,000 souls. And they said, well, would you please, uh, would you like to come back with us? What I did is I asked for projected my consciousness when I crossed them back over, and I went to that soul group. It was the most beautiful place I'd ever seen. And all of these souls were hugging me and loving on me, telling me, welcome back, and it's crazy. And here I was sitting on the beach next to my wife, and I was up in this dimension with these souls, and uh, finally, this angel Gabriel, I use, he comes and says, hey, it's time to come back, man. You can't stay here, you know. So I brought my consciousness back to my body, but it was kind of like, uh, and he said, well, come back, you know, and visit us. And I'm going, okay, you know, I... I don't know if I'm really supposed to. I really think I need to move on and try to find uh, where I'm actually going to supposed to be, you know. No, if you want to do that, just go ahead and die. You'll do it real quick. Yeah, exactly. And I said, you know, i got stuff yet to learn. Um, I think I'm going to be, a, because they had been stuck here for several hundred years. Well, look at the realization, of what the past life or these other dimensions are. They're not out in space somewhere on a fluffy cloud. They exist right around us, right here where we are. When you die, you don't go any place except through a transition zone, a tunnel, and through, <clears throat> through levels of rest and reorganization and recognition. So, so when you come back into that full consciousness, uh, in that realm, you'll be okay, and exactly. uh, and so um, there's the encouragement is we can access all of this stuff when we have done our clearing work, which simply means learning our lessons of what not to do and and what we are not, so that we can become what we are, and that's a steady process of growth, learning, acquisition internalizing, letting go, letting go, letting go of, of every lesson as you learn it because it's internalized in your system. You don't need to hold on to it at the conscious level. Uh, the letting go is just as important as because you're not, you never lose it once you've acquired it. It's always there in your own Akashic records, but you don't want it to be physically holding you back out of fear or the need to control something or to... Or to, to uh, uh, to to uh, maintain a form of consciousness that you might be experiencing now. And that's the struggle a lot of people have as they go through the death process, is, number one, the fear of the low self, 
uh, holding on because it doesn't understand the afterlife. But the low self, the low soul has an afterlife also. And, uh, and, uh, where it goes to wait for reincarnation in the genetic line because that's, that's was its source. That's where it came from is, is it follows the genetic lines of, uh, to, to hold, um, family flows, family flows in consciousness that we spread out and distribute around. And, and, um, it's just a fascinating study. We get into a lot more of this later if you want to. But let's take a break now and then come back and do some healing work. Mm-hmm. JP, are you there? Yeah, um, we're playing a Baba Zadagia, which has a quiet start. All right. <clears throat> Very romantic. It's that really romantic one. This one. This is Adagio by Baba.
Welcome back. Good evening, JP. I don't know where everyone else went. I think everybody's drifted off. That was quite, <laughs> that was that was quite Neptunian. Uh, this is, uh, didn't we just uh, have Moon Void in Pisces, uh, Rich? It took its toll, didn't it? <laughs> oh, it's, it's Mike, isn't it? Mike was talking about the uh, the moon and, and the void impulses, the uh, Pisces. Yeah, uh, things were not always as they could seem to be. You could interpret things various different ways, which would, of course, imp- our imagination. Our, yeah. our our imaginations may be overactive and interfere. Excuse me, with rational decision making and perceptions today. We are not seeing things for what they are. And not necessarily communicating clearly either. Moon in Pisces till 8.13 p.m. Pacific. So that was about a few minutes ago. And the moon was void until 8.13 Pacific. Uh, moon in Aries, 8.13 p.m. Eastern forward. So we have a moon ingress into uh, Aries. Mm-hmm. Uh, the moon is in its first quarter phase. So that's what I have. And okay, that's that's somehow it was a dangerous con- uh, combination today. Okay, I think we're getting ready for our second half hour with Frank hour with Frank Jordan. We're taking healing requests. Are you with us, Frank? Yes, I am. I was okay. enjoying that music so much. Um, I stepped back, and have you ever noticed in that type of music, if you just step back and open up your system? It's like, like your subtle energy system is, is feeling the music. And it's like being in a grass, being a grass field and having every blade of grass moved around in a different motion by the waves of sound. It is fascinating. So that's, that, that's a, one reason why music affects us so much is because it stimulates our, our subtle vibra ports, vibra portals and our subtle energy systems. And our inner system responds to that. Well, anyway, on we go. Oh, that's really, it's lovely, sweet, and it was a beautiful piece of music. Uh, that's uh, the Adagio by uh, Antonio Barba. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, the first thing is, um, uh, she's actually been a guest on my show, and uh, she came up, and uh, she fell and hit her head on concrete. So, um uh, would you like to start off with, she, she was right at the top, now I'm waiting for it to come up, come on, there we go, there we go, so I'm just waiting for, uh, there we go, um, this is, uh, there we go, right, here we go, I mean, there's, there's lots tonight. Elizabeth Joyce? Yeah, so Chalfont, uh, Phil, is that Philadelphia? No, um, what's that, what's that, P- what's PA? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, so she's got a head injury. So this is Elizabeth's choice. All right, let's all do this together so she will get the greatest benefit and so we will all get the benefit of participating in her healing. 
Because every time we do this, we expand our consciousness more and raise our frequency levels, we learn. So let's get into our expanded state of consciousness. Take your awareness up into your forehead. Eyes closed, totally focused on the front of your head at this time. That's the desktop of your bio computer where you rationally, mentally figure everything out. Now take a, take a step further back and you step into the soul center and, and that's a feeling like uh, of coming back within yourself. And our intent is to gather all of our knowledge and our healing energy in one group mind consciousness. So extend yourself out to the rest of the group. Feelings coming into the, the oneness of the group mind consciousness. So we can utilize our intent to the highest benefit of all these people who have requests. Now take a step further back and you open up to the psychic center and that's how we access these individual people. Just like Joyce Chaufort, <laughs> Chaufont. No, it's Elizabeth Street. Joyce from Chaufont. Oh, Elizabeth Joyce, okay. Um, all we have to do is, is put our point of attention on her, on her name, pick up her name vibration, and the fact that she's in Pennsylvania, and there can't be that many Elizabeth Joyce's in, in Chalfont, Pennsylvania, so that brings us right directly to her. Not only that, we, we can follow back through the person who made the request. Well, we know who that person is. Now take a step further back, back into the expanded state of the subconscious mind and feel yourself expand down the spine to the zero point because this is where all the action is. This is where you take the intent resonating directly through her in her, her psychic center and into her physical body because her psychic center will resonate directly with her zero point to bring about the changes that we, we desire. And then take your awareness down the spine to the root chakra, down into earth mind, the negative polarity, and back to zero point, then through your crown chakra to the oversoul polarity, the, the positive polarity, and between these two, in the zero point, the standing waves of the zero point is what manifests, de-manifests everything in form. It's all done with consciousness and intent. So now we tune into Elizabeth, and we go back in time in Elizabeth. We can feel that concussion in her head. It does not feel good. We go back in time now to when Elizabeth, through some wrong choice, allow that accident to happen. So back in that time and space, Elizabeth simply make a choice to, to avoid the conditions that created your head injury. And the physical form itself, we could all assist you with that by visualizing your head between our hands and we reach back into the galactic flow kind of through the back of our heads feel the heat of the galactic energy come into our hands through that positive negative polarity in your left hand and your right hand and we're desiring through the zero point perfection in Elizabeth's head We're washing away the blood of the concussion, softening it up, washing it away, healing the contusion of her head, accelerating the healing, bringing Elizabeth back into the form that she was in prior to the accident.
And when we feel that come fully to form in the zero point, we express it into the future, into Elizabeth's future and our future. Through the power of the Christ in us, we see Elizabeth in the perfect and normal condition. And we feel the pain and the contusion disappearing. The injury. And so it is. See how much power we have when we unify our consciousness. That was virtually an instantaneous healing. And it will continue to act out in our physical form. Okay, for Dent, we have a healing request for Stephanie, 62 years old in Bend, Oregon. She feels that she may need clearing of entities. Well, always we like to teach as we do this, these, this works we do. So I'd like to call on Dan himself to do the clearing of those entities, whatever dimensional reality they came from, as Rich explained. We just send this flow of energy, the galactic energy, to Stephanie, and we make a, a counterclockwise spiral. It gathers those entities up, and then we turn it clockwise and take them back to their own dimension. The counterclockwise means that we were bringing that that attachment from that source of that of their source back into the dimension where she is, wrapping her in that that Taurus, and then reversing it and sending the entities back to their own right and proper place. And that is an instantaneous thing. And then we close the portal. So she should be fine now. All right. Since we have a lot to do tonight, we'll go down to... Free Sovereigns requested for Nadia, mother of a musical composer friend in St. Catherine near Toronto. Nadia had a stroke just a few hours earlier this afternoon. Well, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate what we can do and to really help a person out that needs it. As the quicker we can get to these injuries, the more rapidly we can reverse it and heal it. So what we do is just tune into nausea. We feel her nausea and her situation. And the doctors are doing what what they can do to, just to neutralize the effect of it. So we simply take nausea back in time prior to the stroke when she was back to a time when she was healthy in her brain and she didn't have the embolism forming now this is the this is the template this is the form we bring forward in the standing ways to replace the standing ways of the condition that is being manifested in the zero point. And in this, in the zero point, we dissolve all the blood clots or all the damage to the brain. You move the pressure from the brain. The doctors are already doing that. 
through the power of the Christ within us. We see Nadia in the perfect and normal condition. Now again, see Nadia's head between your hands. Let the galactic energy flow through. Feel the tingling and the heat in your hands. Those are frequencies of perfection that are taken into our head and correcting that condition. And when we feel it stabilized, we project in the zero point into the future the perfection and her body will respond and as she passes into the, the standing waves of perfection we've created she'll regain and reclaim all of her all of her abilities And so it is. Okay. Catherine has Christian Balthazar, 17, State, Oregon. Strain left quad, also knee has pain too. Catherine, you're familiar with the young person, so just put your hands around the knee in that left quad and through you we pour the energy into him Now, recent injuries of this nature heal very rapidly. When my daughter was in college, she was quite an athlete, and she was always bunging up her knees. She was in track, and she had friends that were always getting bunged up. And no matter where Jane and I were in our travels, she'd call us on the phone right from the, the meet and say she needed help, and we would do exactly what we're doing right now. And within minutes, she could go back out on the track and and complete whatever she had to do. So Christians should be fine now. Very good. Okay, Yvonne needs healing for her right wrist. Using computer causes pain and swelling. Needs to break the pattern. Maybe resistance to doing spreadsheet sheets and recording details. There's much more. Yvonne, I'm being shown that if you would Raise the back of that computer up, the part that's away from your body, or the keyboard, so your fingers rest naturally without, without that unnatural cocking of your hands. <coughs> It'll reduce the stress on them, and won't continue to, to break the habit of, of, of repeated motion. And we're, Thank you. And we're wrapping it in energy also to help it. All right. Interesting. There's a, a, a little arthritic pattern there too. 
arthritis in many times is caused by resistance of, of not wanting to do something or wanting to move beyond something. So release it and let it be a joy, whatever you're doing. There. Now move your wrist around. Does it feel better? Thank you. Yes, very good. Thank you so much. Well, we went right through those people. Is there, are there any more, JP? Let me just have a look. Uh, was that was that the whole lot? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, well, uh, while you're at it, I had to walk last night far too far to what I'm used to, um, for hours. <laughs> it was, it was a long, hard road back. Um, and, uh, both, both Nikki and I were, are a little the worse for wear for various, various different things. Um, so, uh, how about everything for every, all the listeners <laughs> to return them to their pure and perfect condition? Everybody who's listening now. All right, this is Wolf Baby. That's correct. All right. We just, everyone, we just wrap these two people, beloved people, in love. And whatever their choices are to abuse their body, help them to love their body and see the perfection and not to not the pain Feel the warmth come into your body, JP. Uh, yeah, and and quite a lot of um, energy shaking. Yeah, vibrational healing being received, definitely. Perfect. Now we'll see that continue, and also while we're focused on it, on you, let's all do a an age reversing process in ourselves. So I would focus on JP and Wolf Baby. <coughs> Pardon me, we see one cell in their bodies which is the same as the cell in our bodies. We see our middle age and aging telomeres that are losing their connection into the universal consciousness that sustains the form of our reality. The, the, the telomeres are there on the end of every gene in the physical form or the etheric form. So we focus on the etheric form with the desire and will and intent to bring back and to youth and reverse the aging process, bring back the youthening process. Because what these do is these, these energies are like antenna into the, into the universal consciousness. And what they do is bring in frequencies of energy, life force energies, and feed it into the genes to stimulate them to do whatever they, they are intended to do in the body in creating life. So as we lose these, as they kind of drop away as every time the cells divide, we get stimulates the aging process because there's not enough 
as much energy to maintain the cellular structure. So in the cell division process now, every time the cells divide, we can constantly replace our cells. We're seeing the telomeres being replaced with healthy, vital, functional antennas to bring life force energy into the DNA that creates and holds the structure of our realities. Mm. That felt interesting. Are you younger now, JP? <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. It? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Quite at least delicious, I, I, indeed. <laughs> So, um, well, uh, we can end early and I can play some more nice music for the people. Does anyone have any questions more about the entities? You know, uh, we didn't go into great depth on defining how you do all this stuff. And if there's any curiosity about that, you healers particularly, let's, do we still have Rich with us? Yeah, we do. Um, I have a couple questions. You were uh, talking about uh, after we die. Uh, I wrote a question when we die. Can we continue uh, ascend? How can we do that? And can the high soul make wrong choices? And do high souls experience emotions? Well, you're only allowed one question, you know. <laughs> I wrote it down. It's on the chat. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I can only remember what at a time. <laughs> That's okay. I wrote them down. That's good. Um, so, can, can when we, we continue die? to ascend after our bodies die? Oh, do we continue to ascend? <sighs> it depends on your level of, of, of uh, the ascension process you've already gone through. And whether you're complete on Earth in this cycle or not, if you're still in your cycles of, of birth, growth, and death and reincarnation, then you'll come back in a plane of consciousness, whatever plane has been created by that particular group of people in that time frame, time span. It, they, it's an ongoing, constant raising of the consciousness level. So you'll come back a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. But you can also carry karma from one lifetime to the next if you didn't learn your lessons or if you did something with someone that needs to be neutralized. You may have to may come back into a very similar situation and and have to re-examine or relearn that process until you get it right. That's the neat thing about evolution. We get to try it again and again and again until we get it right. We learn by making right choices, by not by making wrong choices. Well, here's a, a thought. Uh, perception. So let's say, for example, uh, a person's feeling or something is done and... Uh, let's say I do something and I'm not aware of it, but another person is hurt by what I did. Uh, their perception of me has caused them pain. Where does the karma lie there? And I'm, let's say I'm totally unaware of it and my intention was not to hurt anybody, but it was perceived as hurting them. Well, that person should look within themselves. Perhaps to see what there is within them that could be hurt, that didn't have the strength to, to recognize and understand your actions and to justify them. Uh, we choose to be hurt or we allow it. If we, with our, if we're in our personal power, we will not be hurt. It's a, it's a way of stimulating growth and, and retaining, bringing back, taking back a personal power. Hmm. 
What are those other questions you asked? Sure. Can the high soul make a wrong choice? When you're, when you've died, we were talking about after, after life. Well, okay, uh, like Yogi Berra said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> if you take the wrong choice, then you're certainly going to get another lesson, aren't you? So the next time around, you'll make the right choice. Mm-hmm. So the high soul can make a wrong choice. No, not wrong or right. Well, it's, okay. you know, a, a choice is a choice. So the lesser might be more challenging. More opportunities. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that better. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the, another question was, um, can high souls experience emotions when we die? Like, have you like, ever experienced someone dying close to you, mm-hmm. and uh, you felt that incredible light that comes up out of them? Yes. There is no regret in those moments. The ones that I've had come to me directly, even during their death process, are just ecstatic. It's, there's no negative emotion there, but it's an incredible emotion of of pure understanding and love and release, um, they wouldn't have any opportunity to make a wrong choice. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think in the death process like that, um, love is not an emotion. Love is what you are. Ah. Uh-huh. Exactly, pre- that that light that they are it is the frequencies of 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 the love the galactic flow in uh, interacting in the standing ways of another level of another level of zero point interactivity, which is a higher realm of consciousness. That's so interesting. We just perceive it as joy, but really it is just pure love. Yeah, but love has all sorts of experiential emotions in it. So we do experience a type of emotion then when we die. Yeah, joy. Hmm. And uh, immediately thought the realization comes to mind that we have concern for those we love. And so this is why we don't pass just instantaneously. We move in and adjust to that next, that interim realm and hang around and, and uh, touch back in with our loved ones so they'll know you're okay, okay and not to. And there is a, a situation where too much grieving, too much attachment, too much pain gone will hold the soul that's passed over too. Mm-hmm. And so I've encountered that well quite a few times in releasing releasing high souls. Mm. Also the high souls like we look at when uh, Dave Corso passed away and Dave was the producer of Wolf Spirit Radio who passed away in July and shortly after that JP had a friend who was uh, able to connect with JP or pardon me with uh, with Dave and communicate some fairly explicit information as to what he was doing uh, on the other side and I am curious whether or not that form of communication can extend for a long period of time afterwards are they are they really is like Dave going to be really busy doing stuff is he getting points for doing good things <laughs> or what and we still I, I don't think so I think that they they're in charge of their own reality and uh, they leave it to others who have already gone through their ascension process and come back to assist in the form of guides and things like that. They have to go through a, a period of rest and, and uh, self-examination and clearing. And this is why I, lo- I love the 
the uh, thing we do of the Book of the Dead is that that assists them tremendously to, because that is not something that occurs in the 20 seconds or 30 seconds that we're doing it. That, uh, the way I learned how to do this was in Egypt in the, when I was touring in, in the tombs of the pharaohs. I could read the writing uh, of the, on the walls, not as though I knew Hydra hieroglyphics, but I knew and remembered what the intent of all that was for. And when I got back home again, I was, I was, the realization came to me, it doesn't, because there is no time or space, we can condense space incredibly through a process of focusing the energy of that realm, that transition realm, into a condensed frame of consciousness that just takes a few minutes or not long at all and that's why we call in the, the helpers because they are the ones that do that uh, the transition masters they come in and all we have to do is supply the energy and and project a wave of frequency which is I understand now is the the uh, galactic energy we just express that energy into them so they've got they've got the frequencies of energy to work with to do the the processes they take these these souls through in their immigration process and then they go on through and pass beyond and they're freed up and they can begin their their own higher evolutionary process frank we can also help those that have passed on by praying for them I believe they are praying for us also, and that's a state of um, communication that we can achieve to help them as well. Well, the question there is, where would they be that they need help? Well, like comfort, um, you know, if if they're feeling sad because we're sad or whatever, I think that... Um, well, they're right here. I mean, they're with us. Oh, oh yeah, in that, that short period of time, several days, because they always like to come to their own funeral. <laughs> and uh, I've experienced this frequently at funerals, and, uh, to be able to see or feel the, the person going around touching people and reassuring them, making them feel good about the passage and things. And so um, then... If with your, you give them permission to release you and go on. You ask that they do that, so so you're not holding them back, because there's no benefit to them in you holding on to it for your own selfish loss and and guilt, perhaps. Um, when my husband passed about six months later, he came to me and asked me to go and ask each of his family members to release him and let him go, not to keep calling him back, like saying, oh, I wish you hadn't died, type thing. Yeah, there is that inner realm. It's, it's not a long period of time like six months for them because there's no time frame there. It, it's just an energy that, that holds them. Uh, regardless of how long it takes. So by releasing it, it frees them up and they can go quickly on. So people who are kind of stuck or trapped or that, would it serve them or could we be in service to them by releasing them or does that have to happen from the source, from their family? Well, we do it with the Book of the Dead. Is that what Rich helps with? Yeah, that's what Rich does when he he grabs a couple of hundred souls. Or they're just there hanging out, and they they may have only to them they may have only died yesterday, see, but they're still hanging around in that beautiful place, and. Um, and then when you give them release, they instantaneously translate on a cross. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, can I just ask you one thing? Sure. I had a weird experience about uh, like uh, about three hours ago. Um, I've been out, so you know, I go out in the world, and we went for a long walk, and. Anyway, so it seems that I picked some, uh, you know, something up on my long walk, and uh, it turned out to be a dog. <laughs> and uh, a few years ago, I I lived with a woman who had um, uh, Irish wolfhounds, and one of them died and was quite attached to me, and tends and has turned up as a sort of uh, wolf, wolfhound spirit animal guide for me. Um, <laughs> And this is for the first time. I just asked her if she would deal with the dog. <laughs> and she said, oh, no, okay. And they went off and they walked off together. Um, I've, I've never had that before. But, you know, I, I have these experiences every week about no, never having done these things. Anyway. Well, that's that's fun. fun. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to bring in Evolution. And, uh... There we go. All right. We're going to go to Stellar Group now. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, JP. Thanks very Thank much. You. But I was just wondering, does anybody ever have, have that sort of experience with um, animals? I do. This is, and I've had many experiences with animal spirits. In, in the house I lived in before I moved up here to Oregon, I'd love uh-huh. to talk to you about them. Cool, cool. Yeah, um, give, me a, give me a text, man. I don't know. I'm not, okay. You can never tell. Just let the spirit guide you. That's, that's what it's supposed Thanks. to be. <laughs> All right. Blessings, everybody. Good night. <coughs> Good night. Well. I hope you feel better. Bye. Good night. Mm-hmm. It's Universal Mind Radio signing off. Hope you enjoyed the show, folks. We'll be back again on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. <laughs>